Hey, what's up guys? Kevin with Texas Premier Polishing. Today on Salinas, we got something extra special for you. Back again with another vintage trailer. Uh, this one being a 1951 Silver Streak called the Clipper. Uh, this is back before Airstream was Airstream, which is still considered an Airstream. Uh, it's one of the most rarest designs you'll find. But as you can see, this thing is butchered. Uh, someone attempted to polish it by themselves, but some things like this, this special, this rare, uh, worth this much money, just need to be left to the pros. So you can see some of the guys have uh, started a little bit on the trim here. Uh, this is some remnants of uh, the customer doing it. He was using a flat pad and liquids. Uh, it's not a problem with that. Some guys use Nuvite, some guys use other methods, but uh, you can see where my guys kind of started to take over right here. They started to uh, sand it and they sanded it down with uh, 800, 1200, 1500, and 3000 using grease. You don't want to use too much pressure. You don't want to use too much heat. I want to sand this absolutely highest and as good as possible. That way I have to use the least amount of pressure, the least amount of heat, the least amount of compound to get it done. So this is a, not finished, but this is the first step here. Started with the window trim, got everything done here. But uh, back over here is where you start to see the big mess again. Uh, everything's pretty straight on this thing. It's a little bit of hail damage, but uh, the polishing job is really the only thing that lacks this thing from setting off. It's a praise that somewhere around $80,000 interior is done. It's complete. The only thing it lacks is a polish job. So we've got everything taped down. Uh, everything as far as the lights, all the chrome pieces, all the plastic pieces, the rubber fixtures, all that. So now we're gonna come through, sand everything needs to be sanded, polish everything, and hopefully give you guys a finish just like this. This is a kind of a shortcut piece we did for the customer while he's here to give them an idea of, of what it should look like. And uh, obviously, that sold itself. So we appreciate you guys checking it out. Stay tuned with us. We'll give you a process. Everyone's been asking us, how do you do it? We'll show you exactly how we do it. Appreciate you guys. No hash marks. All right, one of the most important steps, guys, especially if someone's polished it in the past, is to get it off there. So the best thing to use is a acid to erase this. So you've got buffing marks and burn marks and everything here. So basically what we have here is uh, water up to here, acid the rest of the way, then we add a little bit of Dawn dish soap, mix it all up together. The soap helps it lay down and let streak a little bit less. But what Tristan's gonna do is start laying it down with a pump sprayer starting at the bottom and then go up, lay it down smooth, and then we'll just rinse, let it sit on for a second and rinse it off with a pressure washer. Right, now that it's acid washed you can see it reveals every buff pass you've ever made so not only does it tell you how good of a job you've done if you're looking to get perfection on these things but it shows you what areas you missed and uh, kind of what patterns you need to be working on and all this stuff so it's a lie detector as much as it is cleaning the surface and erasing everything so now we should be able to go back over sand everything off and cut away all right like we always hit on prep is key nothing different here especially on this like we mentioned earlier it's all about heat Real thin metal, it flexes, so you gotta really be careful. One thing to remember, we're always gonna do it in shoulder length passes, whether we're sanding or whether we're cutting, coloring, or finishing with a foam pad. But we're gonna also hit these sanders. I got a regular DA, I got an air DA. Doesn't matter as long as it's a DA. But this one, pretty good shape. We're gonna start 800, we're gonna move to 1,000, then 1,500, and then 3,000. We'll start with 800 dry, then move to the rest of them, moving all the way down while using the grease. Just put the pad on there, and as it's spinning, put a little bit of grease on there, and watch the magic happen. This just reduces the friction a little bit, takes the sanding marks out, and makes them a lot easier to cut. Remember, we don't want to spend too much time cutting. It should be very easy. So we got Lamont here. He's going to grab the fast cut wheel with the TR2 Tripoli compound, and give us a couple back cuts and clean this up, and that's going to be our first step after sanding. All right, now that we've got it cut with the fast cut and the TR2 Tripoli Compound, we're gonna grab our mineral spirits, mix with a little bit of Pro 40, wipe down our surface, get all of our leftover compound off there. We don't wanna mix it as we move on to our Joker pad and the Max Red. Now we'll have Lamont come back over, 2200 RPMs. He's gonna have the Joker pad, some Max Red, and add some color to this. Run straight up it.
All right, this is what it looked like after the secondary pass. This pass is just made to add some color. It's tightened down your lines a little bit and added a bunch of clarity. So now what we want to do is tighten down these tinsel lines. Now that we've made it this shiny, we want these buffing marks to go away a little bit. So we'll have Thickbeard do. Thickbeard's going to grab the sander. He's going to have a DA pad on there. He's going to put a foam pad on there. Not a heavy cut, not a soft, but somewhere in the medium. And add three dots of Pro 40 on there. And what he's going to do is work the area real good back and forth, just like you're doing paint correction. And it'll weave in and out. And use the heat transfer to knock out some of these hash lines. Alright, now he's done it with the Pro 40, ran over it probably 15, 16 times to get it go good. So now he's going to take a microfiber, fold it over in fours, and wipe this off. You'll see the clarity still there. It's kind of hazed it just a little bit, but we have a trick for that to fix that. So we'll wipe it off and show you that all the hash marks and stuff is gone. Now what we strive for is a perfect mirror reflection. It's a little bit duller, it's still real shiny, a little bit duller than it was after the secondary step. It's a lot cleaner now, but we wanna, we wanna get that pop. We want that show shine. So what we're gonna do, assuming we've done the whole trailer, is re-acid wash this just like we did in the first part. That's the trick, guys. Get these, the discoloration a little bit out, acid wash it again, then we're gonna come back with our final step. I know you guys are wondering what happened to my nicely polished, smooth, clear surface. Don't worry about it. I know it's the last thing you wanna do as first timers or, or how-to guys or even the professional guys is acid wash a perfectly polished surface but what we're looking for here is over the whole surface is to get all the hash marks down as low as possible so we need to be able to hide our last pass no matter what it was so now that it's acid washed Lamont's going to grab an untreated wheel all white 10 inch buff from Zephyr and the new black magic compound is going to run at about 1800 rpm to get run straight up there and watch how clear it gets This is what we're looking for guys. That's the type of finish we want to have and accomplish over this whole entire trailer. Now we can't just do pieces like this because you'll have patches, patches, patches here and there. So what you want to do is follow me in this next section. You see there's all different designs in this trailer. But here's one of the most unique trailers you'll find so it's a good example. You could cut this piece and color and do all those pieces but what you need to do is do that step by step to the whole entire piece. All the way around to this rib, all the way around to this seam. The whole entire piece needs to be done separately. So I would start here. I start on the left, and I go to the right, then I go up. So I would do this piece here. I get it all cut. Then I move to this one. Then I get this one all cut and brought together. Then I do the whole entire trailer. Then I'd start back here and go to my second step like we showed you. So this repeats your steps that you've done on the little spot on the whole entire trailer. And all you got to do is wipe down at the end and be. Alright guys, if you follow all those steps, you should have a perfect mirror shine. 
Now we mentioned earlier about these big sections here. Now you also see some small sections down here. It just depends on the trailer or the piece that you're working on. This one here has a big section that runs seam to seam. This one here is broken up into two pieces. So you want to run those all together. Not just the finishing step, but every single step. Polishing is meant to hide the past before. So you really got to slow it down, get the detail, make sure your arms and angles are at right speed and you'll have a finish like this. Now, we're going to go back about 1800 RPMs with the Black Magic from Zephyr and a 20 ply Domat flannel pad. We're going to go over this real easy, probably in about two or three passes. We're going to rake in between each pass, putting fresh roots on the pad. Let's just come out to a perfect mirror shine. All you're going to have to do is grab a rag, wipe off a little residue off each rivet and kick it out the door. Stay tuned. Appreciate you guys for joining us on Salinas today. Follow the tips, man. You'll get a perfect mirror shine. We got to get to it, man. On to the next project. <laughs>